So in closing, I'd like to share a collection of tools that will get you up and running with parametric design today. There are a lot of tools out there, so I'm only going to include a few for your reference. The first I'd like to take a look at is 3ds Max, um, because it provides not only a comprehensive 3D modeling, animation, rendering, and composite solution, but object parameters uh, created or objects created in 3ds Max have parameters that can then be related to any other scene property as well as animated over time. Maya 3D offers a um, similar set of tools as 3ds Max, um, but it also um, adds in a number of advanced modeling and retopology tools for creating complex geometry. One that's um, probably pretty familiar to you is Autodesk Revit, which is actually built specifically for building information modeling, allowing design and construction professionals to kind of move from concept through to construction using a coordinated and consistent model-based approach. And so Autodesk Revit actually includes features for not only architectural design, but MEP and structural engineering, as well as construction. A newer uh, product to the scene is Autodesk Fusion 360, which is being uh, referred to as the next generation solution for 3D CAD, which allows you to um, work collaboratively um, using a single kind of low cost uh, package. It has an integrated design tool. Um, it has a complete set of industrial as well as mechanical design capabilities all in one package, can be accessed anywhere and through the cloud, and has kind of advanced collaboration features. Generative Components has been around for a while, but what it allows you to do is, is work hands-on uh, by directly manipulating geometry while capturing relationships in the building elements themselves. So you can work with uh, rules and, and algorithms to define complex building forms and systems using computational design uh, principles. And then a newer tool offered by Autodesk is DesignScript, which is intended to help designers build and analyze complex uh, geometric models that would be difficult to model with interactive techniques. So it introduces a distinction between a generative design description or generative description as a script and then the resulting generated model. So this has some really interesting capabilities because it allows you to take nodes, uh, which are visual programming elements, and then convert them to a text document so you can better understand what's going on behind the scenes. Digital Project by Gary Technologies is a high-performance 3D modeling tool for architectural design, engineering, and construction. And it provides an extensive set of tools for creating and uh, managing building information throughout the building life cycle. Another uh, tool by Autodesk, which is new or newish, is Visari. And it's focused on conceptual building design uh, that uses both geometric as well as parametric modeling techniques. It, supports performance-based design using integrated energy modeling and analysis features. And alongside Vasari is an add-on called Dynamo, which is a visual programming environment for building information modeling. So it extends the parametric capabilities of Revit as well as Vasari with the data and logic environment of a graphical algorithm editor. It's an open source project for developers and designers so they can actually, or you can actually become actively involved in building the tool. And lastly, um, Grasshopper, uh, which is one of the tools that we use quite a lot here at ModeLab. And it's a node-based algorithm editor that's integrated with Rhino 3D's modeling tools to allow users to maintain history across modeling actions. So now that we've outlined the origins of the term parametric and have a better understanding of how to put these ideas to work in our day-to-day -day practice, I'd like to thank you for joining me and I look forward to seeing how you apply these principles of parametric design in your own creative work. Thank you.